The Roz and Mocha Show. Kiss 92.5. Josh, dude, so good to see you. It's good to see you. Awesome. Thank you for sitting in my lap. Yes, that's, I, uh, <laughs> I'm very fond of you, and so I wanted to make sure that you had me very nearby. I appreciate that. Of course. Oh, my God. You know what? Here's the thing. It's another Disney movie that completely makes me cry. Mm-hmm. I loved this film so much. I know. And one of your catchphrases in this that's going to be trending all over Twitter this weekend when this movie opens, I know it now, you said, some people are worth, worth melting for. for. Yeah. Right there, man. Right in my heart. Yeah, it's pretty... I remember the first time that um, that Jen and Chris showed me that line, I was like, oh, this is... This is the oh, one. this is the one. It's so sweet, and it's so beautiful, and it captures the essence of what this character is, and mm-hmm. it's just pure innocence, pure joy, pure optimism, and there's no cynicism whatsoever in his character, and I think that that's rare. Well, with that fantastic line, what if it was real? Who who in your life is worth melting for? Can I? Am I worth melting for? Not quite yet. Not yet. But you're getting there. You're <laughs> oh, definitely fantastic. Are, the ten minutes we've spent together is definitely it's going a long way. Melt for me, baby. But there's a <laughs> lot. That I just we're not there yet. My daughter, I would melt for. My my, I think my whole family, I would melt for. Nice. My brothers, I would probably let melt, um, <laughs> but I would I would tell them how much I love them before I did. Now, okay, you you're you have a child, three year old girl. Mm-hmm. How do you explain when you're doing the voice of a cartoon? It's very surreal. She because if you have this stuffed animal at home, <clears throat> you know, and they look at you, and then they look at the stuffed animal. How on earth? Well, my stuffed animal at home speaks, so it's it's doubly confusing to her. Yeah, she's. Perplexed by the whole thing, she thinks like it's some sort of black magic, mm-hmm. where Daddy's throwing his voice into an inanimate snow monster. Um, I, uh, I the first time she ever saw Olaf was we were watching Monsters University in the theater, and I didn't explain the concept of Daddy was playing an animated character, and so she sees the character come up on screen during this teaser, and it's just my laugh, and she immediately looked at me and she goes, "That's Daddy, more Dada." I want more Dada. And I was like, how, is one, I said, is my laugh really that annoying that it's so unique to that snowman that she would recognize that? And two, I started crying because I was just so amazed that my daughter could could understand that that was her father who was playing that role. Oh, that's so incredible. Yeah. Do you have a soft spot for snowmen now when you drive by and you see one in like a front yard or something? Well, I maybe do. they I... don't have them in LA, but there's some here. Maybe you stop and try and talk yes, to it? Yes, I definitely try to relate to it. I want to make sure that it, you know, has everything it needs. We kind of talk through their issues, mm-hmm. determine, you know, kind of how to stay alive for as long as possible given the conditions uh, outside. I try to help them with their issues. I've, I've become a <laughs> snowman therapist. <laughs> now, when you do other animated stuff, like if you're you're voicing, if you're doing the voice of a dog or right. something, you kind of get how that's going to sound. But mm-hmm. when you're doing the voice of a snowman, there's, there's no reference. There's so no how reference do you find whatsoever. your voice for that? Well, for this, it was it came from a place of wanting to connect with the inner child in me um, because I felt like Olaf, more than being a snowman, was this kind of, he was a pure essence of, of youth and naivete. And so I wanted to just give him a very childlike tone and quality. And so that was kind of how I found the character. And we did um, this, the first session I ever had was just a test where we were like, let's kind of discover who he is. And they let me just play around and improv a bunch. And that test for animation became the final version of Olaf's introduction in the movie. So that that very first session we ever did is what you actually hear uh, when we first meet Olaf. That's fantastic. That's now, really cool. Not a bad-looking snowman, if I do say so myself. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think he's sexy as snowman of the year. People he doesn't magazine. have a lot of competition. It's no. Him and Frosty, but <laughs> I think he's leading in the vote count right now. Right? Before we get wrapped up, I do want to ask you this. You're doing the new Triplets film. Yes. Is there anything you can tell us about that? I don't know how those guys are related, mind you. Yeah, we've, we've found a way. <laughs> where, the, where there's a film, there's a way. Uh, you know, it's, it's coming along incredibly well. I'm kind of actually writing it as I'm doing this press junket because our next draft is due pretty soon. So I think people are going to love it. Do you need some help? If you want to come and sit and give me any advice, I would. I would love to write with you. As long as we have the mic on your 
uh, or the the camera on your hat, then I'm good. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. You know what? I have to tell you. Thank you so much. This movie was amazing. I'm so happy. And to feel that way. you know, I this is going to be one of those holiday films that every year people are going to pop this DVD, and this is going to be right up there with those holiday well, films. I'm very guaranteed. proud of it, and it, and yeah. it feels. It feels like the movies that I grew up with, and so I'm I'm so honored to to be a part of that. Last question: I have to sneak in one more. You must find that this is a dream come true voicing. Oh, a- absolutely! I I dreamt quite literally of doing this ever since I saw the genie in Aladdin, and what Robin Williams did in that movie. I was like, one day I want to play that comic relief sidekick. So now be here with a, a Canadian, uh, you know, icon, radio icon, icon who wears a bicycle helmet on his head and on camera. It's, it's a dream come true. Thanks, dude. So good to see you. Thank you so see you much. Thank- the Roz and Mocha Show. Kiss 92.5.